let's take a look inside the yellow level of the special education reading intervention. So as with all of my interventions on the left-hand side of the page, you'll find that the same activities occur day after day, the same routines, the same ideas. And on the right-hand side of the page, you'll find other interactive activities. And so I want to explain this in depth and then I'll go through um, some of the other activities. So if you are Orton Gillingham trained, you might be familiar with red and green words. I love the concept, I love the idea, but I couldn't find a red highlighter. So I used blue and we have blue and green words. Same idea though. Blue words are high frequency words, words that we can't always decode, um, or maybe we can decode them with certain um, sound or phoneme knowledge, but at this point we don't know those phonemes and graphemes, so they are sight words, and then decodable words. So with this, we always start with our blue words, and we find all of the blue words in the passage. And so we start with the first one. I also have some flashcards that I hold up so that everybody can see it, whether you're paying attention to what's in the book or not, it's also available on a flashcard. I'll ask if anyone knows that word, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It kind of depends on how many times has it occurred in this section. Um, so this for us right now would be a newer word, and so I might say, oh, this word is hard for us. We haven't had this one. Does anybody know it by chance? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, and then I tell them. Then we stretch our arm out right in front of us. I hold the flash card at the end of my hand so that, again, they can see it. We stretch our arm out and we tap our arm as we say each of the letters. Now, obviously it's hard with an overhead shot for you to see me tapping my arm, but we would say W-I-T-E, white, W-I-T-E, white. And we would say that two to five times, kind of depending, again, is this a word we've had many, many times? Is it really new? If it's newer, we might tap it five times, where if it's something like the that we've had many, many times, we might only do it twice. And so with that, then we hunt for that word. So after we tap it, I'll say, find the word white. We'll repeat the same process for all of our blue words. Sometimes those words are in there a lot, in this particular book, they're only there once each, which is okay. Um, then I'll say, okay, switch to green. Then students will get out their green highlighters. And this part is intended to be tricky. And so there are four words here, but only two of them are actually in the story. Now, sometimes depending on, you know, some passages are like loaded with green words. Others, not as much. So Two is kind of the magic number, but sometimes there could be three, or in very few cases, all four of them are there. So what we do is I'll say, fingers and eyes looking at this word. I'll give them a second to get their fingers and their eyes looking at that word. And I'll say, say the sounds with me. And they'll say, k, a, p, cap. And we pound the word. Then I'll say, see if you can find the word cap. So they'll search and they'll realize, oh, that word isn't there. And so we X it out. You could scribble it out. You could do something else, but we just give it an X. Then I'll say, ooh, notice these words have the same beginning. Or in some cases, they have the same ending. Maybe they have the same L blend, the same R blend, the same um, magic E, whatever it is. And so we start to look for things that we recognize. And initially, they were not good at this, but over time, my kids have gotten pretty good at, at telling me before I even ask, hey, these words have the same beginning. And so I'll say, all right, fingers and eyes looking at this word, pound the word with me. Ready? We have k, a, t, cat. And then we find the word cat. Now, we talk a lot about endings, how some of our words have endings on my uh, dry erase board, actually. We have a list of approved endings is what we call them. And so sometimes they might be like, well, this is it, but there's an S. And I'll say, oh, let's check the board. Is that on our list of approved endings? And if it is, then we know we can circle it. Some exceptions to that, or like some examples of when that doesn't work is sometimes they'll wanna say, oh, this is they. And we'll look and we'll say, oh, is why on the list of approved endings? Nope, then that's not they or that's not the, it's a brand new word that we need to learn. But a lot of times I circle the S, I don't make them do that, but they kind of get in the habit of it, which I don't think is a bad thing. 
we would do the same with fat. We would pound it together and then we would find it. And then with this bottom word, this is the early level of this where we're transitioning from like basic CBC words into some beginning, ending, and beginning and ending blends as well as digraphs. And so with this, I might say, ooh, what does FL say? And then students will say full, I'll say add the other two sounds and they'll say at, or we'll pound the word, but we always point out what that piece is. And this one's not there, so we're gonna give it an X. After that, we're done with our highlighters and then we use markers. And there are three smiley faces here. I have a pencil cup for each of my students or well, each of the spots at my table and there are always four markers because I don't really care if you don't like some of them, but you're gonna pick three out of the four. You could do whatever you want. So I might say I'm gonna use these three markers. Now with this, then we'll read it one time. And sometimes for me, I might begin by reading to them. And all they have to do is use their marker to point and follow along. And then when we're done, we'll color in our smiley face. After that, we'll read again. And sometimes we might echo read, we might choral read, um, we might do a close read, lots of different options, but depending on the needs of my students kind of determines what we do. So we'll color in our second smiley face. And then a lot of times we end with taking turns reading or a whisper read. And so after we're done with that, we color in our third smiley face. In this spot, after we've read it three times, then we're ready to start talking about comprehension skills and strategies. And so you'll see each one of them has a picture and we just talk about what does it mean when we see this picture? I don't care if you know all of the words, but when you see the lips, you know, I'm gonna use my mouth and I'm gonna retell you something. And so then we might be looking for what details were told to us about the cats. Well, the cats were black. Ooh, one was fat. There was one that was brown and white. They liked to play together. Those are all facts or details that it told us about the cats. So that's what this side looks like. Every day is exactly the same, only different sight words, different passage, different decodable words. On the right hand side of the page then, you'll find different activities that address fluency, writing, um, just proper sentences, things of that nature. And so at the top of every page, you'll have either a mixed up sentence where the words are out of order, or you'll have a sentence with some mistakes. So here, I always ask them, oh, what word's going to go first? And honestly, at the beginning of the year, they're clueless, they don't know. But in time, they start to notice, oh, this one has a capital letter, so he must be first. And then we know we can't say he fat because fat has a period at the end. So we're going to need to put this word in the middle because fat has to go at the end. And so we just start kind of going through what would be in a sentence. For our sentences with three mistakes, most of them have three, sometimes there are four, but we're looking for things like punctuation, capitalization, words that are spelled wrong, um, things of that nature for them to find. And this is something that again, early on, it's hard. But over time, they, they usually get this one and a punctuation mark at the end. And they're catching on now about a year in for some of my students, some are really good at this, but some of my students are then, this is what's troubling them, but they're getting two out of the three mistakes, which is good. We also talk about a grammar skill every week and we spiral through the same several skills. Each skill is about two to three weeks. So we'll talk about nouns for two to three weeks and then we'll move on to pronouns and other things for a couple of weeks. And so we just spiral through some of the basics. So here, for example, we're going to circle 10 nouns. Then I'm gonna give them a sentence and they're going to write a sentence. We also then, um, the next day, will draw, and I let them draw whatever they would like. It could be about the story. It could be about something random. It could be something, you know, that they did over the weekend, something that they want to do. Um, my kids are never 
Uh, they never have difficulty deciding what to draw. And then the only thing is whatever our grammar skill was, like this is finding nouns, after we're done, I ask them to find nouns in their sentences. And so with this, I like to use post-it notes to give them the spelling of words that are hard for them. Um, if it's a blue word, I'll say, oh, let me help you find that blue word. Or if it's a green word, I'll say, let me help you stretch out that green word. But if it's something that is difficult, for example, right now my kids are on a Minecraft kick, and so they'll say, how do you spell axolotl? And so I'll have to figure out how to spell axolotl, oxolotl, I don't know. Um, but I look some of those things up or spell those for them on a post-it note because those would not be words that they would know. We also do a fluency check every um, day three and day four of the series. And so with this, I usually set my timer for about 30 seconds and ask them to read as much as they can. With this, we put a little mark to indicate where we stop and then I have them underline any words that cause them difficulty because these are texts that are at their instructional level. I don't expect them to know every word and we talk about that. And so then I might tell them, okay, you were able to read seven words and they would write down their number. And then we would set the timer, read it again, and see if they can get their number to be higher. In theory, if I helped you with the word black, you should at least probably make it another word or two. Um, and they do typically get better every single time. And so we talk a lot about growth mindset. I don't have to get to the end the first time. I don't even have to get to the end on the third time. I just want to see my number get better and better each time. Then again, this grammar, we're talking about nouns. So we're going to cross out all the words that are not nouns. If it's not a noun, eh, you're out. We also talk about restating and answering the question, which I think is very important for students to get familiar with early on. And it's a good skill for them to know that it's okay. You know, where do you think Bob is? I can steal some of those words. I think Bob is, and then share our answer. It's something that they're very capable of doing and, and they get good at rearranging those words to make a sentence or to make their answer. And then on the last page, day four, we're going to have that mixed up sentence again where we'll circle the mistakes that we see. We're going to do a fluency check, which again is exactly the same as what we did the day before. And then we have highlighter words. And so with this, I ask them to choose a highlighter or a marker of their choice, whatever they want from their cup. And they're going to highlight the words that have whatever target we're looking at that week. So this week, for example, was L blends. And so I'll have my kids highlight all of the L blends. After they've done that, I'll ask them to whisper read them to themselves. And so then I can see, are they able to kind of apply what they've learned that week to decode those words? Um, some need several opportunities to do that. Some don't get L blends in the first week or R blends in the first week. So sometimes it's something that is a process and that's okay. It just gives me an opportunity to kind of check in and see how do they do with four to five words that have L blends. And then we always end with a sentence dictation where again, I'm going to come up with a sentence. Sometimes it might be um, a little more difficult or less difficult depending on the group. In the lesson plans that come with this, I always give you a sentence, but obviously you can always kind of adjust from there. And also sometimes these words seem quite random. Where am I getting some of those decodable words that go in that green word section? And those come from some spelling lists that I have that go with them. So this is week one. And if you're doing week one with yellow, you might try the blends and diagraphs intervention where these words will line up almost perfectly. So, you know, the words clap and slap and flat were all in here. Words like cat and fat were also in the book. So these two um, work very well separately, but they work even better when they're together. And so all of the words are then kind of pulled as inspiration for the decodable readers.